From LEX 18, your official UK sports station for Big Blue Nation, this is BBN Tonight. Presented by UK Federal Credit Union. Welcome to BBN Tonight. I'm Keith Farmer. And I'm Anna Tarullo. Yeah, tonight we have the latest from Chen Coleman and Orlando Antigua and a behind the scenes look at Chris Oates' recent camp. But we're going to start with the show tonight with a vocabulary lesson. Okay. Consistent means unchanging in nature, standard, or effect over time. Consistent is how we would describe Kentucky football under Mark Stoops, an unchanging standard of work on the field, in the community, and for each other over time. It's created consistent leadership in the locker room, and lately, the team has been consistently winning. In the last five seasons, Kentucky has the fifth most wins in the SEC, more than Florida or Auburn. Woo. More wins than Arkansas and Vanderbilt combined. Sure, Mark Stoops gets and deserves a lot of credit for building the culture of consistency that we have come to enjoy, but his players have had an equally important role in creating and carrying on that model of success. How they carry that forward is tonight's Big Blue Story, presented by CHI St. Joseph Health. From Bud Dupree to JoJo Kemp and Boom Williams to Courtney Love and Quentin Bohanna, Josh Allen and Benny Snell, Lynn Bowden, CJ Conrad, and more. You know all these guys. Uh -huh. There have been empowered, these have been empowered team leaders on every roster. Now, last season's group of seniors, they were no different. And thanks to the COVID year, there were a lot of them. <laughs> Ten super seniors on that roster. Mark Stoops lost Josh Pascal, Luke Fortner, Darian Kennard, Yusuf Corker, Bully McCall, the the list just goes on and on this offseason. Now, most programs that lose that many significant guys would probably be a little worried about a leadership drought, but 10 years ago, Kentucky probably would be too, but that's not what this program is anymore. Yeah, it's because this year's team has as strong of a group of leaders that we can remember. Yes, they lost a lot of leadership off the offensive line, but Kenneth Horsey has seamlessly stepped in to be the unquestioned leader of the Big Blue Wall of the locker room as a whole and also in the community. Will Levis has without a doubt taken the next step in his development as the patriarch of the offense. And on the defensive side of the ball, the team is unwavering in their belief in DeAndre Square leading from the middle. Now these are the three men who were easy <laughs> choices to represent the university in front of the national media at SEC Media Days last week. What's up everybody, Kenneth Horsey here, number 68 with the University of Kentucky. Me, Square, Will out here in Atlanta for SEC Media Day. It's really a blessing to be able to come out here and represent y'all and everything the Big Blue Nation has done for me and my teammates. So shout out to BBN. Go Cats. Their work on the football field has certainly given them a platform. Will Levis named to the Davey O'Brien watch list and the Maxwell Award watch list. DeAndre Square to the Butkus list for the nation's top linebacker. And Horsey's on the All-SEC second team this preseason. Now the on-field success is where our focus will be this fall, but it's their dedication to representing the program and serving this community that has really stood out this offseason. Levis has been everywhere this summer, <laughs> from charity golf events to the Manning Passing Academy and NIL Summit, and he's managed to really pop up in every single group workout picture that the team has posted. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good, good year. We are, we're looking good. We had a good spring. I'm really happy with how we progressed throughout spring and how we end up, ended up. And we're going to be, keep grinding in the summer. And then when, we, when comes camp, I think we're going to be in a really good spot. And Horsey has continued his work with the Heart Health community by teaching his teammates hands-only CPR and kicking off the Central Kentucky Heart Walk. I still feel weird wearing red. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still right now. <laughs> I feel weird wearing red too all the time. Don't worry. <laughs> now, DeAndre Square represented the current team alongside one of those former leaders that we talked about, Randall Cobb, at the Kentucky Pro Football Hall of Fame evening. And he was in the group of players who stepped up to fill in host Lynn Bowden's youth camp on short notice when Bowden's flight was canceled last minute. And it must have gone well since Square tweeted they were, quote, <laughs> hands down the best kids ever had way too much fun. So it's no surprise that when the idea of a football camp for teammate Chris Oates came along, these three were on board. And although Levis, Horsey, and Square will probably be the trio leading the Cats out of the tunnel each and every Saturday this fall, they were happy to be followers this time.
because he said he was going to be a captain. So that was his thing, day one coming in, him and Square. So it was like to have him there and Square walk behind him, that was a thing. It was like, um, you know, real as a mom, because we're emotional, that was real emotional for me. It means a lot to me, you know, uh, me and Chris being you know, teammates and you know, best friends. So it was really important for me when I first heard about it to get out here. And it's even more special to really be out here um, with the kids, uh, see, them, see them having fun and see Chris having fun. It just makes my day. Keep moving it down, y'all. Keep moving it down. Back up to the sideline and stay in your line. We're going to do some warm-up drills, Kentucky style. Obviously, everything we're doing for Chris is, is awesome, and he's what it's all about. But then, secondly, is just to show these kids a fun time. And obviously, I'm getting a good workout for myself in, too, so that's a good little secondary positive of it. Listen to your coaches out here, but most importantly, just have fun, all right? this, I think, so I have a little bit of time to show. I might need to uh, spill some water off on you guys. I'm very thirsty. Work on three. One, two, three. That was awesome. He's made such great progress. And, I mean, that was almost black tear to my eye. Yeah, it was a special moment, honestly. I just know I've seen on videos how hard he's working to to regain his uh, mobility. I've seen his progress, I know he can do it, so it was just, you know, really good to see him in person. Last time St. Crystal's, when we played against Florida, he was doing way a lot better than what I've seen him. He's standing up, he actually can talk to me, he can actually know what we're saying to him, so it's an honor, it's really a blessing to see him doing that. His main thing that he said when he was in the hospital is that he wanted, didn't want to be forgotten, so this makes him feel like he's a part of um, the team and still a part of the BBN Nation. It's still a part of the football community. And when they said that they wanted to do this and they wanted to honor him, he was ecstatic. He um, just cried about it like, oh my God, my first count. And so he was really, really adamant about coming out here. Around this time of the season, it helps him. It helps him motivate him because he knows where he wants to be. And when he's out there, he's at home. When he's out there and he's happy, See, a thing about rehabbing is your mindset has to be there. And if your mindset is not there, then your physical is not going to be there. As long as he's happy, he's thriving, then I know he's going to do good. And if this is what keeps him thriving, and this is something that he loves to do, coaching, being around, blowing the whistle, just running up and down, we're driving up and down with him now, it just motivates us like, yes, we got this. And then, Christopher, your legacy is still going to move on in spite of what you can and do, do off the field. You can help off the field. Instruct these babies how to do it. Instruct them how to live right. Instruct them let them know that it could be gone in a second, but you still have something to contribute. We know he's gonna keep fighting as hard as he can. He's got a big heart, and we know that uh, he's gonna do everything he can to uh, get back.
Wow, that was just incredible. So many thoughts on that, but yeah. just emotional is what it makes you. The money raised from that camp will benefit the Chris Oates Foundation, which supports not only Chris and his family, but is also raising money for other young stroke victims. And you can help too. Just go to 22oatstrong.org, follow them on Twitter at 22oatstrong, or send an email to info at 22oatstrong.org for more information. The foundation is a 501c organization and all donations are tax deductible. And we want to give a shout out, a special shout out to LEX18 photographer Tyler Ross for shooting that story. He did a fantastic job capturing so many special <laughs> moments, maybe some drop <laughs> passes, but that's what made it so good. And then to our producer and reporter Maggie Davis for putting that story together. Shout out, Maggie. Yeah, so many things going into that. I love seeing him lead the team mm -hmm. out of the tunnel. Gosh, and I love that. Also, the, the players that can go out there, those young yeah. campers that can go out and say, Will Levis Will threw passes yeah. to me. Yeah. I may have them all but yep. he threw one to me and just the <laughs> smile on chris and kim's faces amazing yeah. all right coming up next on bbn tonight we will hear from basketball coaches orlando antigua and chin coleman you're watching bbn tonight